Fred Goff moved to Columbia in 1948 at the age of five with his parents who were working for the Presbyterian Church. At the time, the Latin American country was in a state of civil war called La Violencia. His experience of growing up in such an environment left an indelible impression that would set the stage for his future life of service and commitment at the data center. So Fred, tell us about your first experiences with uh, data gathering, information dissemination, and using it uh, to create political change. One of my father's assignments was to uh, investigate religious persecution in Colombia. Many of my weekends as a child were spent walking around our dining room table collating these bulletins that he put out, uh, documenting uh, various incidents that he would go and investigate and take depositions, take photographs, and then disseminate them through these bulletins to the press, to the diplomatic corps, to congressional, all kinds of opinion shapers, and to try to get the uh, Colombian government to stop the religious persecution through the force of public opinion. And I saw firsthand the power of of research and documentation and combining that with getting the word out to uh, make change. While a student at Stanford University in the early 1960s, he organized around critical issues of the day, participating in the Mississippi Freedom Summer of 1964, the anti-Vietnam War protests, and speaking out against the military occupation of the Dominican Republic by U.S. troops in 1965. The following year, Fred helped start the North American Congress on Latin America, or NACLA. NACLA quickly became famous for putting together one of the best collections of research on the relationship between the U.S. and Latin America. Salvador Allende, the president of Chile, would later tell the media, if you want to know how the U.S. has affected Chile, just read New Chile by NACLA. The real power of a lot of NACLA's research was we documented it and footnoted it from established mainstream sources and it was very difficult for people to say what we were saying was not true. And people said, look, all these companies, banks, institutions that you're writing about in relation to Latin America are operating all over the world and here in the United States. Why don't you open your library to the public, uh, make the focus not just be Latin America but on the U.S. political economy and effect, its effects wherever it is, domestically or f overseas. And that was, the, that was the origin of uh, the data center. Founded in 1977, the data center became the largest and most trusted source of information in corporations long before the creation of the internet. So one of the important things that you did was actually classify it in a way that made it not just accessible, but also a tool for resistance, a tool for activism. Basically we said we want to create a library that serves organizers and serves people who are working for progressive social change. To date, the data center has continued to strengthen community voices and social justice campaigns through research and has achieved many victories around the country. Looking at things as a victory is, uh, to me, I think the older I get, the more evanescent that concept is and the more important it becomes to uh, do your work and treat each other in a way that affirms the values that you're trying to embrace in whatever change that you're making.